Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be creating a canvas bag um, using all our mixed media products. So quite often I sort of say I'm a mixed media artist and I kind of forget that while I'm a mixed media artist I don't actually do much mixed media. Well I do mixed media but I tend to use the same stuff over and over. I use acrylic paints, I use my paint pens and I work in my art journal. So I saw these bags on sale in Spotlight which is a kind of our equivalent of Michael's though not quite as good and um, they're only two dollars each so I bought a whole heap of them and decided I'd create on these and make some Christmas gifts and I really loved how they ended up and they were just so easy to do. So this technique, you've seen me do similar things in my art journal, it's really easy to recreate onto you know, um, canvas panels, you could do it onto a pillowcase, you could do it on all sorts of things. It's just so simple and easy and it's fun to do and it's a really easy one to colour coordinate to, as a gift to other people. So I'm starting off, I've masked off my um, area I want to work on. I did put a craft sheet inside my um, bag so it wouldn't leak through to the other side. I have used painter's tape to go around the edges and just make sure you've pressed that down well um, so it gives a good seal on the edge. I also gessoed the background because I was working on a um, calico bag um, so I wanted to get really bright colours on this so by gessoing at one it means I'm not going to use quite as much paint because um, it will spread better over the gesso and two my colours are going to be more true than um, if I'd just done it onto the calico colour. So I'm just going in and painting all sorts of random shapes, squares, um, rectangles. I did splodge some paint where I didn't mean to, but you just wipe it off with a wet wipe. I'm using, um, I'm using my Dina Wakeley paints to do this one, but um, any acrylic paint. Now, I will say that I don't intend to wash my bag. Um, while acrylic paint is permanent, when it's heat set and I'd probably iron it after I'd finished it I don't tend to wash my stuff afterwards like, like bags like this so um, if you're really concerned about it or you knew you wanted to wash your bags lots I would suggest maybe mixing in some fabric medium which you can probably get from your local craft store um, so just be aware putting it out there um, so once I've finished painting all my little spots, then I'm just going to do some mic making over the top. So to make it easy on myself when I was painting the colours was I chose a colour combination that I really like and I painted it in three spots. When I got to do this section, whatever mic I did in one colour, I did it in all of them. So I didn't have to think about it um, and that's, you know, I know when I've taught classes before and I talk to people they sort of go oh I just can't think of patterns to do and it's just too hard well choose one and do it in each area so every time you've got turquoise you're going to do these semicircles whenever you've got the pink you're going to do lines whenever you've got the black you're going to paint something else in it so um, it makes it easy you don't have to think about it that much you only have to think of a few things rather than lots um, I knew I wanted to do some mic making over this um, with paint pens so I'm just painting on really really simple shapes but there's nothing to stop you if you don't want to do this sort of doodling on it you could stencil into each of those different areas you could stamp in them you could you know use paint pens and just write in them or draw lines in them it's up to you so you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want to there is no right or wrong way of doing this so once I finish doing my mic making, I'm using my black gesso to do that, only because that's the only black paint I have, so any paint you've got will work. Then I decided I'm going to do some stenciling. So I'm going through to find my stencils. <laughs> it takes a while. And you'll notice when I'm doing this as well, I'm trying to f work on um, contrasting colours. We're trying to get sort of colours that will contrast. So obviously, you know, if you've got blue and I'm stenciling over with white, it's going to stand out pretty well. And again, you can sort of see me lining it up. This particular word stencil is great because it's got some words that you can put into focus. So I've got the be bold, be you, trust. Um, you can sort of go through and pick which ones you want to do. Um, this little floral stencil 
I've got it on the metallic so I'm actually going over with a royal blue color so it stands out I also really like the little line work on it so I've gone back in and added that too so again you can add as much or as little detail as you would like to each of your parts and in each part again you know where I've done it once I've done it three times so with my makeup sponges that I use to do my stamping or not my stamping my stenciling with notice when I change colors I just chopped off the end obviously you can wash them out but I don't have the patience to sit there and wait for it to the compressed sponge to dry um, so I just chop it off at the end so it, it's up to you with this one I first stenciled in white just so I could get a really true turquoise color over the top um, if I'd just done the turquoise over the fuchsia I may have ended up with a um, more purpley toned effect so um, if you want to make sure you're getting true color you might like to stencil with white first and then go back over with the color that you want this uh, um, art by Marlene stencil both of those little lace work stencils were they're really really handy for um, just doing little bits and pieces like this so again with my mark making I'm going in with my Posca paint pen um, everything's pretty much dry now just make sure before you start working on this that everything is dry enough otherwise you might find your pen work disappearing slightly as it sort of mixes in with the wet paint so if it is actually dry it'll sit really beautifully on the surface so again I am just doing the same thing in each place I don't have to think about it whatever I've done in one I'm going to do all over and it can be as simple as just adding in a little bit of white on the lines to make it look interesting so with this you can stop at any stage to depending on how much detail you want to put in um, if those of you who have done my um, free Christmas class that I put up um, early December uh, you'll notice this is kind of similar to the technique patchwork technique we did in the background for our Santa Claus um, and I put stitch work around the outsides of the squares you could certainly do something similar with this you know if you are a quilter or a sewer you know you might have some really interesting buttons or things that you could sew on or embroider onto this so instead of using pens you could actually embroider or do some stitch work on it would be really really interesting sort of adding that element to it as well because remembering it's mixed media so that doesn't just mean paint or stencils it using all the things that you do um, to help you out okay so just by adding the line work to the stenciling you can see what a difference it makes and you sort of start off with something that someone else has drawn with the stencil and by adding your own work to it um, it just makes it yours the fact you know it gives you a bit of a hand in what you're doing and you've got those lines to help support you as well so once I've finished doing all that and cleaned up oh now I'm doing some more because I just can't help it so drawing around those little florals with the white pen just again to pop that out so as I was saying before you can stop at any stage so you might find that this is okay this is what you want to stop with um, and you can see me peeling off the outwork by the outside so you can sort of see what it ends up with but I decided I wanted to put some big bold words on this so here I am just painting some gesso straight over the top of what I've just done you might think well, what are you doing but um, I wanted to have these words in my bag um, you know so I'm carrying my artwork around with me but I'm carrying some positive phrases around with me too so I've just painted some really patchy gesso and I'm going to write on here I am bold I am brave I am strong um, and I was trying to think of what I was going to write but I knew I they were going to be I am statements so I started off with that I am bold um, with the font that I'm using I'm just using sort of really long chunky letters quite thin and then I'm filling in all the um, circling shapes um, so they're solid black um, so you get that sort of focal point on it which I really liked 
Again, because you're using the Posca paint pen, just make sure it's dry at the end. So that's it. It's really, really, it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to. You could certainly transfer that onto a, like a cushion cover, um, obviously as a bag, and you'll see me modeling in a minute in front of my Christmas tree. Um, it could be a canvas that you hang up on the wall. Uh, it's, do it in your art journal or do it into a card front. So it's something that you can have, you can personalize, you can make as gifts for other people. It's really, really simple to do. And I'd really encourage you to think outside the box and think what else you can create on. Use your techniques that you use in your art journal and transfer it somewhere else. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye for now.